This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing and all the news, things that are going on in the world of sim racing. And for years now, we've been working on The Pit Stop Show, whether it was going to be daily or bi-weekly or once a week. We've had our audience watching and talking with us. We've cleaned things up, just trying to find the right way to do The Pit Stop, and I think we've finally gotten to that point. So here we are, closing out January 2021. I can't believe it's already 2021, and I can't believe that January is already over, but it sure is. So here we are for The Pit Stop, talk about everything going on, and it should be a pretty quick show, but I do want to give a small disclaimer slash warning right now. So uh, unfortunately, and I'm not going to name my cable company, my internet has been very iffy, which means this show will work fine. It's a pre-recorded show. Everything should go fine. But as far as our watch parties, as far as the live streaming of races and things like that over the next week, it's going to be on standby. I'm going to try the best I can, but the last three or four streams that I've done actually ended because my connection couldn't even hold up. So let's cross our fingers that it's going to be a good week or a decent week, uh, but you can stay tuned for the streams, and as of next Friday, we should have everything resolved on that end. So what is going on? Oh, one more little disclaimer. Now, for YouTube, this won't change anything. We've been doing a watch party live on Twitch each and every episode, and I'm going to bring that to an end. We're going to start doing an after pit stop sim pit conversation on twitch rather than distract the show with this we're going to combine our groups the show will be only on youtube starting in the next few weeks for the next few weeks i'm going to be warning our twitch viewers that hey we're not going to be there during the show but we'll be here immediately after and we might even use that as an opportunity to do some community racing we'll see how things go over the next few months anyway what is going on in the world of sim racing? I don't want to keep this show too long. We rarely get a chance to talk about money paying dirt off-road racing outside of rally. And in particular, I'm talking about the trucks. Uh, but this season, we've seen the 2021 General Tire E Short Course World Cup on iRacing, which is a cool series. Well, Holden Heitritter, uh, apparently he won uh, the, cha the, the championship. Right? No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Sorry, sorry. Forgive me. Uh, yeah, this is the total championship. So at the end of the season, the final points table for the 2021 season are Holden Heitritter with 110 points, Luke Noop Nup uh, in second, and Connor Berry in third. I ask, have you, do you guys race? I love the trucks, but I've done very little public racing, very little points racing. Certainly not good enough to be up in these. When I go up against the big boys, in uh, uh, dirt trucks, I, I get my ass handed to me. I'll, I'll be the first one to admit it. Oh, uh, look at that. Parker Kligerman finished 15th in the points. Congratulations to Parker. Look at that. Ron Caps, Landon Castle, Greg Biffle, Travis Pastrana. Because um, these are all pros. That's why. <laughs> eh, too funny. Uh, anyway, there you go. So that is wrapped up and we're no longer going to be talking about that. Uh, the 24 hours of Daytona. Um, so our team did not run the race. Uh, iRacing had the same old problem. Uh, it seems like every Daytona, every big, big, big endurance race, there's a server issue and rooms don't launch or people can't get in. I don't know, uh, but it's really aggravating. And so after about a three-hour wait, our team called it. We just weren't willing to reschedule our drivers and account for an extra, extra, extra long 24-hour race. And we had no certainty that it was going to launch or that if it did try to launch, that it would even work. So it was very, very frustrating. But despite that, iRacing did go on to relaunch four hours later. And for those who took part, it was still the greatest event because it's the Daytona 24. Uh, immediately after pulling out, I was guilt-ridden. Uh, I wanted to run. I was really eager for the race. It's one of my favorite races of the year. So I'm still conflicted, still torn personally. Now, looking back, what I didn't know, had I done it, my internet wasn't going to hold up. I would have been a liability to the team now that I think about it because I was already having internet issues. We just hadn't dis completely uh, diagnosed them. Anyway, VRS Kawanda SimSport went on to win the top split, which is, it's hard for me to even explain to you how tough it is to win the top split of any series. It's especially hard to win the top split in a 24-hour race. 
and it takes the likes of drivers like Joshua Rogers, Mitchell DeJong, Mac Backham uh, in order to do it. Think that a three, you know, you want to win. Our team often goes in with five or six drivers, make it easy, make it fun. And, and we'll be competitive because we put a lot of work and time into it. Uh, but if you really want to be a contender, I don't know, three-man team might be the way to go, but think about it. Eight hours each. That's eight hours of driving over a 24-hour span of time between jo Rogers, DeJong, and Backham. So well done to those guys. Never easy to win that top, top split. Looking to NASCAR, uh, NASCAR has announced that they are returning with the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series. Uh, just to be clear, because I screwed it up on the truck one, this is the pro real life pros running in the race. So not eligible to the best of the best sim racers. This is going to kick off March 24th at Bristol. So we're a couple of months out yet from this, but they will be doing, it looks like a five race season uh, for the pros to have a place to race. And this is one of the things we talked about just in the last three wide. Uh, how much of the pro racers hanging out in the sim racing ranks how long will that continue after the, the lockdown, we'll just call it for simpler wording? And and apparently, I think there's going to be a few traces of, of... Well, I think what happened is that some pro racers actually got the bug. Some pro racers realized, hey, you know, racing's awesome when I'm in my uniform and getting paid to do it. But it also comes with a lot of stress. But I'm a racer at heart. I want to race more than one day a week. Think about it. If you're a NASCAR pro, a real-life NASCAR pro, spent all those years loving racing, dreaming racing, and now you only race one day a week. Uh, we sim racers, we race seven days a week. And I think a few of those pros have gotten the bug and we're going to see them around more and more. What else? Uh, there was also an uh, announcement at NASCAR. So NASCAR... Uh, the website also posting and talking about the renewal of the 2021 eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series. So it is big news in the NASCAR world, in the iRacing world, and in the sim world. It was the inevitable. You know, a few guys really challenged him this season, uh, more so than any of the previous seasons. But Alex Bergeron made history with his third iRacing World of Outlaws sprint car title as Ryan won the Charlotte finale, but Bergeron still secured enough points to go on to win the championship. So uh, let's see how the points wrapped up. Looks like Tim Ryan won the fi final race over Hayden Cardwell. James Edens finishes in third. Alex Bergeron in fourth. Final points, though. Bergeron, 725. Hayden Cardwell, 702. And Kendall Tucker in third with 579 points. Congratulations to all those guys. I saw a little bit of the racing over the season, and after we've done a little bit of sprint racing this season in a much, much, much easier car, I'm blown away by how good these guys do it and how pro they make it look. So congratulations to Bergeron. Congratulations to Cardwell, Edens, and everybody in that series. You guys put on a great show, and you're definitely one of the groups making sim racing look good, right? All right, uh, Seto Corsa, there was an update for the PS4 that came out on the 26th, 1.0.0.12 on the Xbox One. In-game version is 1.6.5, by the way. Patch notes can be found on their website. Uh, and then, what, a day later? No, same day. Uh, Xbox One version. Uh already seeing 2021. Uh, do not buy it. So there was a little problem where that showed up, but it wasn't ready to go. And then on the 27th, that was the day after the patch, two days ago, Intercontinental GT Challenge, the ACC 2020 GT World Challenge DLC lands on the PS4 and Xbox One today. So if you want to play those upgraded new cars, new naming, new titles, all that stuff within Assetto Corsa, it is now available on the consoles. It's been out on the PC for quite some time now. Okay, I wasn't exactly sure what this article was all about. This is posted by Codemasters F1. Williams duo Russell and Latifi are first Formula One drivers confirmed as virtual Grand Prix return for charity. So there's a charity event going on, and it looks like the Williams team will be taking part in this. This is a, a return of a, a, char a charity event that was done last year. Um, Alex Albon was a, uh, a favorite in last year's Virtual Grand Prix, uh, along with Jeffrey Hurling. KTM driver Petro Fittipaldi made his Haas debut. 
Uh, while the return of the Virtual Grand Prix will give fans around the world excitement ahead of Formula One season starting in Bahrain, the primary focus of this year's three-race competition is to donate money to charities chosen by the teams. Each nominated charity will receive a significant donation from the overall prize fund, regardless of whether the team finishes first or last in the standings after three events. Uh, this is all going to kick off February Sunday, February 7th, and Sunday, February 14th as well. Uh, the Virtual Australian Grand Prix will be broadcast from 1800 GMT on Sunday, January 31st. So that's this Sunday. This sprint race. This sprint race is the one we're talking about on the 31st. Um, and then you have the final events on the 7th and 14th. So anyway, charity event going on. A return of that charity event, I should say. Uh, Dirt 5. A um, little bit. Actually, this is for Dirt yeah, Dirt 5, sorry. I got Dirt Rally in my head. Uh, struggling to know where to start with designing your own playgrounds in Dirt 5. You know, I got the game. I never designed my own playground. Did any of you, do any of you have a playground that I need to drive? If you do, send it to me somehow, some way. Send me an email, sean, S-H-A-U-N, at simpit.com. Let me know how to get your playground, and I'll give it a run. I'll give it a run for sure. Anyway, uh, here's a video. Uh, head to discover... Head to Discover to find inspiration from the Dirt 5 community's very best creations and sparks some inspiration. So there's a video there, and it's at their Twitter page. Again, every time I talk about a story, the link to that story is in the description of the show here on YouTube. So if you want to get more details, you want to actually watch this video, it's right there in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, Formula One had their Challengers eSport events going on. They, they didn't have a lot of replays or things to watch, but... They did have this one. Um, here's, wait, wait. Here it is. No, where'd it go? They must have scrolled the page on me. Hold on. Uh, battle is on. Watch live now. Oh, they just did a bunch of updates. Or lights out. I thought I had a highlights. No, that's a different one. Anyway, we've got a bunch of videos of the Challenger series, but I really just want to give you the results here. Um, here are the results. No, they're not. It says... It says here are the results. Here we go. Okay. So, PC results. This is round three. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is I would keep your name on your eyes on the top five drivers. Because these are the guys making a, a bid at getting into the big leagues. Uh, you think of a premier league. You think of those series or those types of places where or leagues where you have two leagues and the bottom league will get promoted. And the top, you know, uh, the tops of the bottom league will get promoted, and the bottom from the top league will get relegated or demoted. Anyway, so keep an eye on Josh Idao, Alessio De Cap Capu. Do I need my disclaimer? I need my disclaimer. We cannot continue this. Uh, Bense Zabo Coney, Nicholas Matero, and Patrick Sipos. That was race number three from Netherlands. Then we've got. Race number four, round four, it says, Patrick Sipos, Ruben Vallejo, Bensi Sabo Konyi, Ati Kapanen. So I can't say the names, but we're going to have to keep our eyes on some of these names. Event number two, DiCapio, Sipos, Kapanen. Are you starting to see a pattern of Idao in fifth, Vallejo in fourth? Um... Anyway, I think that's all we've got from that. But I just want to let you know uh, what is going on, what is in the works right now is the Challenger Series being underway and getting new drivers' opportunities to be in that top, top F1 eSports series. This is the highlight video. All right, NASCAR Heat. Here are the highlights from Sunday's Xbox One race for Winter Heat Series of the Indy Road Course. Let's take a quick look. Matafuco. Oh, gets punted. Oh, oh. Shenanigans. More shenanigans. Wow, this highlight video doesn't exactly make it look great, does it? Arcade racing. Arcade racing. Five wide at Indy Road. Oh, he runs him. Oh, there was somebody in the wall. That car in the wall had some substantial damage, by the way. Did you see that? 
Boom. <laughs> okay, that's about it. Uh, WRC, the new WRC9 update is available fixing more issues reported by the community. Timer issues, break in suspension and service bar fix, and more. They have some patch notes. Again, the links to everything are in the description of the show if you want to get them. Uh, fixed an issue where a timer could start before the car crossed the starting line. Fixed a crash when a steering wheel without force feedback were used. Unnecessary tile tips from options. Anyway, here's a full list of fixes for WRC9. Uh, race room. They also had a maintenance and an update deployed. This was our screenshot of the day. I love the look. Ooh, let's take that disclaimer down. We're done disclaiming. Uh, I love the look of the, that picture right there, the BMW versus the Porsche. Um, anyway, so there was an update, and as well, if you go to Steam, there is a full, it's a 1.2 gigabyte update, and a, a gigantic changelog when you consider how long uh, Race Room has been around. Um, so really good list of fixes, some physics fixes, some track fixes, just some general uh, bug fixes and things like that, and there's the full list. Let's see here, blog, here we go. Um, now, I'm unclear. Uh, there's a Fanatic sticker. This is just for your reading, for the most part. This is at the Fanatic blog. Now for something completely different. Who doesn't love a V12? We're fans of real and virtual cars. Fanatic has proudly supported the Bread Van Homage Project. This is a real-life project, I believe, by the way. A one-off design exercise by Nils Van Rolge that references the legendary Bread Van of the 1960s. I've always loved the unique car design and that carries into our own products. We want to surprise and innovate rather than following expected trends, those lines of fanatics. So there is a real authentic uh, bread van, Ferrari. As a lifelong race fan, I've always been fascinated by the history of racing, particularly in the 60s when the rules were far less restricted and the aerodynamics was barely understood. The original, anyway, I, I'm not sure how this applies to us other than that it's something that fanatic is backing and it's a cool project and if you're just looking for something to entertain yourself but on to bigger news from fanatic bigger and better news from fanatic fanatic is now it's been rumors that fanatic is to launch cheaper wheels for the playstation 5. i mean if you think about the lineup right now the csl is the least expensive wheel and i would say it's a good entry level wheel for a real sim racer but at that price i would not call it a starter wheel for somebody just trying to play Gran Turismo and go from a controller to a wheel. So apparently, they are going after that market. Uh, this is one of those moments you have to kind of say, hey, Thrustmaster, take notice. They're coming after you. Because really, Thrustmaster is the only one making some sub $200 wheels uh, available to entry-level gamers. Uh, but in its 2021 forecast, Ender states it should break through the, ready for this? 100 million euro mark in consolidated sales for the first time. So we are looking at the biggest year ever uh, for Fnatic. So congratulations to Fnatic on, on, on maybe being uh, the first sim company to establish themselves. Well, no, I take that back. I uh, scratch that whole statement. They are not the first of anything in that department. But that is a huge, huge mark. So congratulations to them on a $100 million dollar uh, 100 million euro 2021 is their their forecast. Uh, and keep in mind, just last week, we talked about their sponsorship. How much money or what kind of arrangement did it take for Fnatic to become the GT World Challenge sponsor? Uh, we talked about that last week. But, you know, this is no small potatoes event um, that Fnatic is the official proper sponsor of the real life GT World Championship. That's a really, really big deal. Um, anyway, uh, in addition, I think a lot of you have already seen this, but I'll pull it up real quick also from Fnatic. Uh, you asked for it, now it's here. Our new entry level hub offers many of the advanced features of the Club Sport Universal Hub at a lower price. So you can see, uh, look at what Fnatic's done over the years. You know, if you go back in time to the 911 base, you know, and and that was a cool base in that it really kind of got their name on the board. And and it it was a pretty decent wheel for the time. And that led to the club sport, which has gone through a few generations to the point that it's one of the mainstays of the sim racing world, along with the club sport pedals. Uh, you know, from there, they went two directions. They went to the high end with the podium lineup and some higher end wheel rims. And they kind of reintroduced the lower level wheel with the CSL 
and some less expensive wheel rims. So they really kind of created a nice portfolio. Well, what they didn't have was that universal old hub. The universal hub allowed anybody to put any, you wanted a Momo wheel, you want a Sparco wheel, you can put it on your Fanatic base using the universal hub. But now they're doing it at that lower level. You combine that with that press release talking or about that announcement, talking about going after a lower line of wheels. And you can see Fanatic is really, really on the move right now. Uh, uh, you know, really trying to offer something to everybody in the sim racing market, which is pretty, pretty impressive. And and I can say they're the only hardware company that's really doing that, working from the basement to the penthouse. Uh, SimiCube had a couple of videos, so I'm just going to show them here. If you're a SimiCube fan, uh, they're kind of doing a rollout of their partners and groups that they're working with. We talked about that uh, last week with wheel rims and things like that. Uh, anyway, this is getting to know your SimiCube Partner Series 3, presenting our official OEM partner, SIFA T Road Safety GmbH, is now live on SimiCube's website. So you can check that out if you're a SimiCube fan. And then also an hour ago, they posted SimiCube is proud to be part of a creative, creating success stories in Finnish motorsport and provide maximal realism for the driver's simulation training. So um olympic training center in finland apparently is using their equipment so that's cool euro truck uh oh what happened there what did i do did i remove my tab what did i do something went weird there uh-oh oh i see what i've done give me a moment to fix this you guys sorry whoa oh it came over here okay let's just put this here and fix that uh, Euro Truck came out with the Iberia gameplay video. This is Euro Truck, not ATS. This is ETS. And we got a gameplay of Iberia, which is the new content for that game. 17 minutes showing you quite a bit of uh, Iberia, apparently. So we'll kind of click along through here. And hey, where's your, where's your interior fobs, your interior toys and doodads and goodies? Oh, he's got sunglasses there. I think that's part of that kit. Although, that's a cup holder. Anyway, there's Iberia. In addition to that here, let me be careful about the way I do this. I don't want to kill my thing. In addition, so here, uh, another post by them. Iberia toll gates and toll roads. There's a toll gate that you got to go through and various different toll roads that you will be utilizing throughout Iberia and a bunch of screenshots and things. So, well done, well done. Always plenty coming from them. What else today? Uh, Xbox Live Gold. This is just an article. I'm not throwing any of my own opinion on it. I'm just telling you what they said. You could read the full article. Windows Central posted this. Now, keep in mind, Windows. Windows Central. This is a website that focuses on Windows. That's Microsoft. Anyway, Xbox Live Gold just became the worst deal in gaming update. Microsoft hikes the price of the Xbox Live Gold to double that of the PlayStation Plus. You know, I, is the, these things, you know, unfortunately, what's going on in the gaming world is that I, I, here's what I feel like is going on in the gaming world. Uh, when I had my internet problems, I started comparing what I pay for internet to friends of mine in other countries and found that here in the United States, I am paying more and getting less than just about everybody I talk to. Uh, there's almost not a country I, I, I talk to friends in Canada, talk to friends in Europe, uh... And we are paying ridiculous amount of money for very mediocre internet by comparison. And I look to this and I think, here, Xbox Live, well, when they make a rollout on the cost of Xbox Live, it's worldwide. I feel like now all of a sudden the world is being asked to pay the gouging, the outright theft, gouging prices that we are paying here in America for things. And now they're doing it worldwide when you're talking about gaming. But whether you're talking Netflix, whether you're talking your internet, everything that is uh, internet has gone through the roof 10 times the cost of what it would be, should be in any other industry. Um, but here we are, uh, Xbox, sticking it to everybody. I'm sure that's going to have a negative impact on them. There is a line. There is a line where it becomes too much and people are going to say no. Uh Apex Racing League. There are a few leagues that I follow, a few racing leagues that I think are just top, top leagues. And, and I try to give them some attention from time to time. Anyway, Apex Racing League, a lot of my friends run over there as well. 
Announcement, Season 1 of the AR, ARL Prototype Championships. So they are now moving into another championship form. There's actually going to be money on the line, 500 uh, pounds it looks like. Um, and here is their calendar. It looks like a six-race season, and there are links here if you want to get involved or check it out or watch it, any of those good things. All right, just a couple more things. We'll bring this show to a close. Um, Motor One with an article. Who's your vote? Before we even scroll down, world's best video game racing drivers come from this small country. It was a no-brainer to me. It's not just video game, by the way. There is one country, and it is not a large company, and it's in Europe, and hands down, this is the breeding place of the greatest drivers, or at least per capita, the most great drivers in the world, and that being Finland. Yep. Those in the know, when it comes to motorsport, will have likely heard the phrase, if you want to win, hire a Finn. And that's true when it comes to real racing, but also bleeds through into the video game world. All right? Well, this is also written up by Pentagon Group UK. Um, they talk about winners of Nissan GT Academy, winners of World's Fastest Gamer. Uh, whatever the criteria you use, you're going to find the Finns are the most dominant nation by far. All right, let's check out some rigs and then the, let's call it a day. I posted this because it's green. <laughs> and that's it. it just, he has green gloves there to match. Uh, would you put a green seat on your rig? I would. Now, the only problem is the sim pit colors are blue and orange. And green could not be a worse color to try to mix with blue and orange. So you're not going to find a lot of green here except for in a green screen, maybe. But uh, I do like that chair. And if I wasn't uh, streaming with blue and orange colors all the time, I would totally put a green chair. What about you? Uh, then I was looking at this. I couldn't even figure out what was going on on this rig. Oh, it's the carpeting that confused me. Anyway, this guy's got a cool... That's a nice-looking seat on some kind of a adapted, changed, or home-built rig. Um, kind of cool. Finally finished. Not a lot of details on this one, but there it is. Another rig. What's holding that wheel up? It's got, like, a little... I don't know this rig. Does anybody know that rig? I've never seen this rig that one post design holding the wheel is on the right hand side i wouldn't want to put much more than this thrustmaster wheel on that rig by the way it would work it would get it done and you can see this guy's lifestyle a little bit this is a couch and a carpet and carpeting so i'm assuming we are in his living room but there he's got his toolbox right there in the living room he's that could be a friend of mine for sure <laughs> All right, this, this was posted. I, sometimes I just do this. I don't know, you know, maybe it's motivation for you on a design you have running in your head. You've been like, hey, I want to make my own sequential shifter. But there's so many ways to go about it. Anyway, here's one approach, ME1X. Shifter almost done. Tomorrow he'll solder everything up. Then all he needed is a gear knob. So let's take a closer look at that. Nice looking shifter. Can't quite tell how it operates. Looks like ultimately... It's just one of those double spring type, is my guess. I wonder if he did anything for resistance, but great looking work. Um, he kind of copied a little bit of the AIO logs design with the interlocking plates. That's definitely AIO log inspired in some way. Or it's a common way to build a box as well. Uh, I'm not going to use the word. Another day, another beep rig picture. Uh, ghetto rig. Anyway, he's got his Fanatic CSL. He's got a Fanatic sticker on the back of that ch chair. He's got a carpet so it doesn't slide. And you know what? When you're talking about how to start, when you're talking about getting into sim racing, you're talking about maybe trying to sim race at your mom's house where you're not allowed to have a rig, you get all that put away and make mom happy or the wife happy or somebody. Anyway, uh, this one I liked because obviously this guy's a musician. I'm no musician. I just love seeing... I think of us sim racers as being hobbyists, you know? We are hobbyists, and hobbyists are rarely just honed into one and only one hobby. I myself probably have five, six, seven different hobbies that I pursue and love. Uh, anyway, obviously this guy has a couple passions in life, one being music and the other being sim racing with his play seat challenge. He's bragging about what he paid. He only paid 45 EU uh, for the setup, so yeah, with a Logitech wheel. 
It's not bad at all. Not bad at all, especially for the money. All right, uh, Sim Pit Racing. We no longer give you the results from all the community racing because it just sort of, it's selfish, and this show's about the news. If you want to find out how all of the Sim Pit community did, we run a, a Mustang series, a dirt oval series. We run a paved oval series. We run rally series. We run a road series. All the results here are done in our weekly show by Devin Booth, the Pit Pass. And you can see uh, this week it was Jaw 647 taking top spot in Rally 2. But if you want to find out more, you go check out that video right at right here at YouTube. And beyond that, I'm going to mention the rest of our streaming just so you know what's going on. Tonight, if everything holds up, my stream works. We're going to be at Charlotte uh, tonight at 5 o'clock. That'll be at Charlotte. I don't know if my stream will work. If it will, I'll be showing you the race. Otherwise, the Sim Pit Arca League will be at Charlotte tonight. And going into that, Mark Michkowski holding about a six-point lead over Cho Hildinger. Tomorrow morning, whoops, oh, here's one more. This is, here, check this out. So this, I don't know this lady, I'm assuming some of you guys probably have seen her before. This is packed by Mac Noslo. I've received a few messages from users asking to do a video of the DIY sequential shifter I posted last week. So here's a quick video of it in action. So it almost looks like one of those Airbus flight controls, but you can see it way up there in front of the steering wheel. Um, and she was using the, the Thrustmaster handbrake but yeah, there's a DIY. I'm assuming there were some other photos on Reddit that you could have checked out, maybe through some of the process. I didn't see them. I just saw that one. Uh, getting back to the patron. So our patron group, this is the group that support. There's financial aspect. They support. They're the guys who just help to make sure the Sid Pit stays on the air. And I am eternally grateful to these guys for all the, the support they give me because it goes beyond the financial. These are a lot of the guys I race with, guys I hang out with on Discord. And they also financially help make sure the show stays on the air. Every month we run a patron appreciation race. This month we're trying to do a set of Corsa. I hope we can get a few more drivers involved because right now it's a real small number, which I put this race on for the guys, but I also like to put on a good show. And if we don't get a decent amount of people out there, let's face it, it's going to be kind of boring to race and kind of boring to watch. But nonetheless, hopefully we'll get that crowd. Nonetheless, there will be a trophy, trophy given to the race winner. That'll be tomorrow pending my ability to stream. And then finally, Sunday morning, we have the Simpit GTE League. We'll be at Nurburg combined. Oh my God, Nordschleife with the Nurburg GP. Gonzalo Perone taking a 10-point lead into that race over Randall White. You can find all the previous results, everything we talked about in that Pit Pass show. And beyond that, I'm just going to give one more final reminder that uh, for the next week, for, until next weekend, all my streaming's on standby. I will try to go live on Twitch Live with various races. And if the stream fails, we're just going to call it a day. It's been really frustrating. We're working beyond that, but we've got edited content in the work in the works. So we'll have some shows coming out to hold you over as well. Also, final reminder, not final, but final reminder today. Uh, for any of those who are accustomed to uh, being part of the live stream on Twitch, watching the show, we're not doing that anymore. But starting right now... We will be live on Twitch to talk about sim racing in general, talk about all the news topics from today's show, and maybe even set something up for doing some racing after internet pending. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for hanging out at the Sim Pit. Thank you for hanging out, being part of the sim racing community, which makes it so, so strong. And get out there, do some sim racing. Have a great weekend. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.